I would like to pass on a, uh, an idea for your consideration. This is uh, a method that I use to help people improve their technique when I'm not around to actually help them with their technique. And it's super simple. It just uses your, your phone to record your sets. So perhaps you have four or five sets of six repetitions that you're going to do for, let's say, bench press. You just set your phone up and you record all of those sets. And then the, the, the actual method is this. You do a set of six repetitions. And then you sit up on the end of the bench press after you've done the six repetitions. And you ask yourself which of those repetitions was the best. Which one felt the best. And a couple hints at to which one might be the best is how quickly it was, was able to move up. And then... You know, how smoothly it, it, it felt to you, how light it felt. One of those reps out of that six kind of feels lighter than the other five. Um, until you're doing everything perfect, of course, then they all feel light. But one of them sort of feels better to you. One of them moves better to you, in your opinion, in the way it felt to you. Oftentimes that's at the beginning of a set because you're not as tired and as fatigue crews, you... We tend to, to, to break down our, our, our technique. But, but it, could, it could happen anywhere in the set. You're doing a set of six, and one of them was the best rep. You identify that by feel. And then you sit up on the end of the bench and remember that one rep that felt good. You go through it in your mind. You play it again. The goodness of how it felt. It could be something specific that you remember about the movement. Or it could just be a general feeling. And you just repeat that feeling in your head. Then you get up off the bench and you march over to your phone. And you look at the video of you doing those six repetitions. And you pick out on the video which, which of those repetitions you thought felt the best. And then you match what it looked like on your phone on the video to what it felt like for you in your body. And this linking up of what it feels like to do something well and what it looks like to do something well is a very good coaching technique, self, self-coaching, I should say, technique. Um, you, you get to link up what it looks like as if you were watching someone else do it. And of course it's you, but you, you get extra information because you know what that felt like. And so you do this for every set, and you you only you only look at the things you do right. You never ever concentrate on something you did wrong. When you're training yourself and you're not with your coach, when when you're with your coach, it's fine to work on the things that you're doing wrong. The coach will point that out and he'll help you correct them. But when you're by yourself and you're self coaching and you're doing something right, you should, you should pounce on that. You should really, really try to um, take greatest advantage of that day that you're doing something right and try to do it even better. And then you and your coach can work on when you're with them and when they're there, you can work on the things you're not doing so, so well. But a lot of people, when they self-coach, they always focus on, on just what they're doing wrong. And, and they're always spending time in the session in their head with what they're not doing well, with what the, what's all wrong with everything. And I don't know how productive that is. Um, I'm all for working on our weaknesses and improving the things we're doing wrong. But I think that's best addressed and tackled when you have your coach right there with you. Uh, when you're by yourself, why not just focus on what's going really well, what you're doing good, and improve that. If you're already doing it pretty good, then that means your body knows and is learning and is ready to learn that, because it's happening. I say you run with the ball. You, 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 you just squeeze that for everything that it's worth, and you keep building on what you did right. So I tell my people, you sit on the end of the bench, you pick out something you did good, you pick out the rep that was good, you go look at that, you link up what it looks like with what it felt like, and then you march right back to the bench again, and you only take the best with you. 
So you did that, that one rep really well. So you bring that back for the next set. You bring the good thing you did back. The good rep comes back and you try to do even better. And you got six chances to do it. You got six reps to try to improve that good thing. And perhaps you'll discover that you do something on that set that was, was better. And you, 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 you may change what you're trying to improve, but at least you're always spending time in your sessions alone. Not just training and not just, you know, attempting to improve, but you're sticking with the positive stuff. And I think this is super helpful. And I think it's super useful. And you can, you can take it and see what you can do with it. But I have a lot of my people spending most of their time that's not with me doing just this. They, they videotape, or videotape, they, they re video record with the, with the phone. There's no tape involved, I suppose, now anymore. They, they, they video record their, their sets. And then they use a feeling that they got during the set to see what that looks like and, and what it, what it feels like and what it looks like at the same time. And if you do this, I think I think you really can improve your 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 technique without a coach there and um, see what you can make of it. Uh, I think it's a it's at least not a negative <laughs> uh, practice. And I, I think sometimes coaches spend too much time on what's wrong. And that can be, that can, that can wear on people. That can wear on, if you always tell a kid or an athlete that, that they're doing this wrong and they're doing that wrong and they're doing this wrong and they're doing that wrong, man, that, that, that gets, that gets heavy for people. And I think it's important that we also tell them what, what they're doing right. And in the past, I, I can admit that I was not, I was always worried about helping people do the thing that they're doing wrong, right. And I, I didn't spend enough time telling them what they were doing right. And that's, and that's to my um, criticism, right? But, but I don't do that anymore. I spend a lot of time on telling them what they're doing right, and I, I encourage them to, to do even better. And then I also will work on their weak spots with them, too. So you don't have to... It, this isn't an either-or thing, but I think too often times coaches are he too heavily weighted on the negative. They're always harping on what, what the weak things are, and they don't say enough about what's strong. This method of self-coaching only focuses on what you're doing well, and it reinforces it, and you get better at it. It's, it's remarkable how much improvement you can make all by yourself with this, uh, with this approach. So you can try it and see if... Uh, you can make something of it. And um, I, I thank you for listening.